Success is something you can't guarantee. You can delay a project to make sure it's good. You can scrap the project entirely before it's too late and keep your head high. But every now and then, no matter how hard you try, something rotten will slip through the cracks anyway. And when that happens, it's only a matter of time before the storm goes loose. Just like any other company in the world, Riot Games can make poor decisions that haunt the player base for the rest of their lives. But despite what other companies are capable of, so far Riot never tried to screw with us on purpose. Whenever an oopsie happens, it is genuinely not done with malicious intent. However, on the other side, that is not an excuse to say, yeah, I'll pay $10 for three numbers and no reward. So, because Riot is celebrating their 10th year since the launch of League of Legends, and because I am always up for some healthy comedy criticism, let's have a look at the past 10 years and let's talk about five times Riot made the community go... Ah, here we go again. Before we dive into these five biggest fails Riot ever produced, we need to set up some rules. I don't want to talk about balancing. Game balance can very easily mess up. And even though there were times when pro teams banned all 10 AD carries at the same time, because they were simply too strong, I wouldn't really consider bad balance of a class a fail. Instead, I want to look at things that legitimately left scars on the players. And most of these scars don't come from in-game things. It's usually what Riot is doing outside the game. At the same time, I don't want to go too far from the game either. Yes, sometimes writers can get mean and they lose their jobs over it. And let's not ignore the fact that sometimes certain accusations against writers may be proven right, and they don't lose their jobs over it. But I would like to keep some comedy in this video and I would like to stay monetized. So we will not talk about these specific cases either. And the last thing we will also not talk about are Eternals. Yes, there is no doubt in my mind that the reveal of Eternals was a massive flop because not a single living soul that played League of Legends liked what Riot was presenting. And who knows? Maybe the end product will be just as bad as we thought. But as of right now, Eternals were not released yet, so Riot still has time to fix them. So with all of these rules set, let's finally have a look at the top 5 fails in Riot's history. Number 5. When we are talking about fails, we need to talk about the classic. Bugs. There is a lot of them, they are everywhere, and that's fine. No matter what game you play, you can't avoid them. So the only thing that matters is how serious are the bugs. You can usually notice them when they affect your performance. But in one case, there was a bug that violated your performance, ate his homework and let it go to bed without dinner. Back in the days when League was still using an MMO-like talent tree for masteries, the client wasn't exactly in good shape. Yes, I know that some of you laughed when you looked at our current client. But trust me, you have no idea what it feels like when you have to reinstall the game every time you disconnect. Anyway, during these good old painful days, some individuals, out of which Mr. Terrible became the most famous one, figured out that with a clever set of inputs during Champion Select, you could use multiple mastery trees at the same time. And once you realize that the masteries could stack on top of each other, suddenly instead of mere 10% cooldown reduction on summoner spells, you could have 100%. Yep, after that things escalated quickly. Flash became the fastest way to travel, and who needs damage when you can jungle with unlimited smite? Also, spreading poison like this gave a new meaning to proxy farming singed. Of course, it didn't take long before Riot looked at their data and said, hmm, that's odd. And the same day the bug was discovered, Riot managed to fix it, they released a statement, and they banned all players who abused it. Looking back at this, I could have picked a lot of different in-game bugs to talk about. From Zerath having global queues, to Anivia spawning Azir's turrets on the enemy's location every time she landed her queue on her own nexus. But there has never been another bug that would force Riot into releasing an official statement, where they announced that they will deploy additional systems to track future bugs. Number 4. Speaking of old systems, does anyone remember the term Team Builder? I certainly forgot about it, and I am glad you reminded me what it even was. Because oh my god, what was it even? Back in the days when you couldn't simply pick a role you wanted to play, back when you had to fight your teammates by shouting mid and insta-locking Ari the moment you got into champion select, these were the days when Riot realized, you know, maybe letting people literally fight each other so they could pick the champion they want and enjoy the game isn't a good idea. So they started coming up with new ideas how players could simply go into league and play the champion they wanted. And that's how Team Builder was born. 
You see, these days you pick two roles, you click you're ready, and the game puts you into champion select where you get the assigned role you picked. Most of the time. But the first ever iteration of this kind of draft picking was way simpler. One could even say, too simple. Like way, way, way too simple. The way it worked is that you picked a specific champion you wanted to play, you then picked the lane and the role in which you wanted to play them. Then, after you picked what and where you wanted to play, the game would put you into a queue. And after a while, it would throw you into a team. After the team got full, after every player clicked that they are ready, the game would log the team in and it would throw you into Summoner's Rift. Sounds cool, right? But it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. First of all, the game generally tried to find normal teams. By which I mean two solo lanes, one duo lane and a jungler. But as people started getting creative, the system wouldn't know what to do with them. Suddenly, off-meta picks were considered normal. Lanes were being swapped. And what's worse, every time you got into a team, unless you checked the option to be the leader, someone else was in charge. And that someone could start vote kicking. So if there was someone in the team the leader simply didn't like, they had the power to remove them. So if you wanted to play an off-roll pick, the only way to do that would be to start your own group. Otherwise you would get kicked. But then again, people would leave your group after they noticed that their leader has a troll pick. Another problem connected to this is that if you left a team and you wanted to re to find a different team, tough luck. Teams had priority in the queue depending on how long they've been waiting. So until someone else filled your old spot, you would keep getting reassigned to the same team over and over and over again. And don't get me started on the fact that supports were simply non-existent. Queues would usually take 15 minutes before someone decided to play a support. The game would try to lure in more supports by giving them better rewards, but for some reason players didn't care about more influence points. However, by the time the system finally found a support player, everyone in the team would be asleep. And you could never get everyone to click ready so you could finally start. In the end, the system had a lot of promise. And let's be honest, Team Builder eventually turned into the role picking system we have today. So it ended up as a success in the end. It's just funny that Riot liked the old system so much they gave presentations about it. And they even gave Team Builder its own trailer. Number 3. We live in the age of loot boxes. No matter where you look, companies are trying to squeeze your wallet for a little bit of ecstasy rush from rare loot. Occasionally, some companies rig the chances to lure in more whales. They pretend there is a high chance of getting something amazing, while in reality the chances are usually half of what they said, if not less. And almost a year ago, regardless if it was intentional or if it was just a bug, Riot had to deal with some chance rigging of their own. You see, people were always aware that they are never lucky and that every single time they reroll three skins, they get something bad. But soon, some people had enough of cheap Nunu skins, and they decided to test if this really is just a bad luck. Some people tested it on PBE, and some tested it on live servers. But the results were the same. Despite Riot telling us that the chance to reroll any skin in the game is exactly the same, the statistics people gathered showed us that it was nearly impossible to get anything above the 975 RP price. The chance to get a 1350 RP skin was supposed to be 25.7%, because that's how many 1350 RP skins there are compared to other skins. But after rerolling 50 times, which is 150 skins down the drain, they didn't get a single 1350 RP skin. Another user tried 60 rerolls, and they also didn't get any 1350 skins. And soon, more people joined them. And Riot was probably happy about it, since some people were dumb enough to run their experiments on live servers, spending real money. And every now and then, some users confirmed that they did get one or two skins above the 975 RP price. So it was confirmed that it wasn't impossible to get them. It was just that the numbers were rigged. And rigged they were. Late in the night, Riot Kaktebus confirmed that something was indeed happening. They checked the numbers people presented. And while the calculations were a little bit off, the chances were actually unintentionally unfair. What seems to have been happening is that the system wrongly calculated chances when you already own some of the pricier skins. So they easily fixed this by allowing all skins, including those you already owned, to drop from rerolls again. And after that they had to update the entire rerolling system. What is strange about this incident is that was it not for a couple of angry Redditors, Riot might have never realized that they were rigging the drop chances. Which leaves us with the question, how long has this bug been going for? And how many legendaries people missed out on before Riot fixed it? Number 2. 
Are you a lowly peasant who can only play one champion? Are you really good at that one champion no matter who you play with? Are you completely screwed when someone bans the one champion you are really good at? Well, do I have a game mode for you? The day was the 10th of March 2018. Riot announced their answer to people who are looking for more competitive game modes. The name? Clash. A game mode that simulated what it's like to be a pro player, no matter how good you are. On paper, it looked pretty solid. There was a competitive structure, with 3 day tournaments that would run every 2 weeks. There were unique rewards you couldn't get any other way, including team logos you could upgrade the more you win, trophies that would display on Summoner's Rift during normal games, and banners that would similarly hang around Summoner's Rift. Granted, you still had to buy the entry tickets for RP, but these rewards were quite cool anyway. During the tournaments themselves, teams would have to scout their opponents, ban whatever their wanted ponies are good at, and pick solid comps you know how to play. Overall, it was a good day for Riot Games because they knew they had a solid plan, with solid new addition to League of Legends. The day was March 16th. Server, EU West and EU Northeast. The servers were on fire. The name? Crash. Apparently, Riot didn't come with the possibility that the game vote would be popular. And so, when hundreds of thousands of bronze fakers rushed to sign in for Clash, the servers couldn't handle it. First, the European Union of the East was on fire. Then, it quickly spread to the West as well. Before Clash traveled over the Great Lake, Riot pulled the plug. They cancelled all plans to test Clash, and they went back to their cave to fix all the network bugs. You see, League of Legends can handle hundreds of thousands of games at the same time. So, what was the problem with Clash? Well, although the servers can handle large amount of games at the same time, Riot didn't realize that the system wasn't built to handle large amount of games starting at the same time. Once the games ran, it was all fine. But the server couldn't handle thousands of keys being shoved into one ignition hole. So after a couple of weeks, when Riot reinforced their servers, they ran the test again. April 16th, exactly one month later. A fire rumor to start the Great Amazon Inferno enveloped Europe and Riot pulled the plug again. This cycle of bug fixing and server reinforcement continued to this day. And it's been only recently that people finally started experiencing Clash the way it was supposed to be experienced, with the game working. In the end, Riot decided to just spread all the games around, instead of launching all games at the same time. They would separate the tournament into four groups, with each group starting half an hour after the previous one. So now, things seem to be finally stable. And all it took was the annihilation of the player's trust in the system. So since we are talking about the greatest oopsies Riot had ever done, of course, we had to mention Clash. Number 1 League of Legends has its way to ensure players don't leave the game so quickly. There is a certain level of replayability, but even that will eventually fade for everyone. Riot also has a variety of game modes to offer its players. Once you are bored of Summoner's Rift, you can hop into ARAM. And once even ARAM won't satisfy your casual side, you can hop into Twisted O. Oh. A recent addition to the permanent game mode family is also Teamfight Tactics, which really serves as its own game. But none of these game modes would stand strong on their own, was it not for the slow, but real, reward system. You see, even the lowliest of peasants that play League of Legends for free can look cool eventually. League of Legends has ways to grant its player skins for free. And all they have to do is to play. A lot. But you may have the question at the back of your mind asking, what if everything League has to offer was free? The 10th of January 2019. It was a cold snowy morning after I deployed our latest patch, 9.1. The patch contained fixes to the brand new rune system, new rewards for taking down turret plating, a set of new Blood Moon skins, including Prestige Aatrox, Prestige points which you could actually buy for real money at the time. And what is that? All the loot in the store only cost one Blue Essence? Well, don't mind if I do. Once the heralds of Blue Essence spread the message, and people learned of the mistake Rat made, it was as if Black Friday arrived early or late. People fought to be the first to lock into the clients to spend their precious blue essence. For a while anyway. It took Riot less than an hour to fix this mistake. But by the time they did it, people already spent all their blue essence on capsules. And they literally got every single skin the game had to offer. But what's worse, since prestige points were available in the store as well, they spent their blue essence to get unlimited prestige points and the shiny new Aatrox too. Clearly, these people just abused an obvious mistake in the store, and their punishment would be unavoidable. And unavoidable it was. 
the next day. Riot reverted all prestige points purchases and they removed all Aatroxes bought this way. When it came to bans, some people expected a week-long ban. Others were afraid of permanent bans. In the end, there were none. And when it came to all the bot capsules that unlocked everything League had to offer, Riot couldn't do anything about it. League of Legends doesn't take snapshots of your account, so Riot can't go back to see what your account looked like last week. In fact, unless they search through your purchase history, they wouldn't know what your account looked like yesterday. So they didn't have a way to revert everything to a previous point, because there quite simply isn't a previous point. You see, the prestige points purchases are clearly visible on your account. So Riot can search for accounts with large amount of prestige points and calculate how much blue essence it costs so they can revert it all. With capsules, that's not how it works. Every time you buy a capsule, it has different value because it contains different skins. Yes, Riot can see how many capsules you bought, but once you open them, the numbers go wild. If the capsule unlocks a new skin, Riot would be able to manually remove it from your account. But they were not ready for all the extra things capsules can do. After all, there is a reason why you can't refund capsules. You can also get Hextech Crystals, Extra Blue Essence, Orange Essence. You can disenchant skins for Orange Essence. You can reroll skins for permanent skins. And all of these actions simply flooded the charts. So yes, you could see what your account got. But they would have no idea if you got it legitimately or if it was a drop from one of these free capsules. Therefore, Riot released a statement where they acknowledge that it might feel unfair to some players. But there was simply no way they could deal with this problem in a fair manner. At the end, they ensured us that they are taking extra steps to make sure these things don't happen in the future. You know, a similar statement they made 7 years ago with the mastery abuse. But that doesn't take away the fact that on the 10th of January, people were able to complete their League of Legends accounts. Which they would later sell for a nice fortune. Hey! Did you know that we have social media and Twitch where we talk about other League facts and stories? And did you know that we have need mugs and shirts too? The links to all of that will be below. And as always, thank you, come again.